Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is April the 10th, 2019. Yes, I even got the date right in this video. Let's talk boxing. Arguably, the biggest match of the year. Between two unbeatens. I already have a video up. I've read some of the comments here. I just wanted to add an addendum. The fight's happening this weekend. It's between unbeaten two-time Olympic gold medalist Clarissa Shields and unbeaten longtime champion Christina Hammer, one of the best jabs in the business. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I'm going to ramble just a little bit just to give you perspective. I believe there's a difference between who you root for and who you bet on. Right? I root for the New York Knicks in the National Basketball Association every game. Right? Every game. I don't bet on the Knicks every game. Hell, I don't bet on the Knicks most of the time. So, let me just say this. Some friends, in talking to them about the NCAA, keep telling me about Zion Williamson, right? The college kid out of Duke. I keep hearing about Zion. They're saying, hey, he's the next LeBron, <laughs> right? And all I can say is understand there is a difference. And it's the size of the Grand Canyon. There is a difference between pros and amateurs. A huge difference. Right? Zion Williamson right now in the amateurs is not averaging or did not average his freshman year three assists a game. He's smaller than Ben Simmons. Right? Who, of course, as a pro averages well north of three assists a game. He's smaller than Anthony Davis. It's guys like Anthony Davis he would have to go up against in the pros. Right? You need to spot bubbles. I know people are all hot and bothered right now over some of these amateur players like Zion Williamson. I'm usually on the other side of the play because I understand to be a LeBron James, to be a Ben Simmons, to be an Anthony Davis requires a hell of a lot, certainly more than a great amateur pedigree. So, let's just look at the pros for a second. And I understand most of the videos here online involve men's boxing. Understand, there is a two-time Olympic gold medal winner, Vasyl Lomachenko who's widely considered to be one of the best in the sport pound for pound. His first pro fight, he decided to go up against Orlando Salido, who has been in the ring with some great fighters, right? Juan Manuel Marquez, among others. Well, you know what happened. The pro showed the amateur Joe the value of professional experience. Salido kept collapsing the pocket that fight. He kept going to the body that fight. Lomachenko, spectacular amateur record, even outside of the Olympics. Spectacular. Not only that, he had a run in a semi-pro World Series of Boxing League where he was spectacular. Lomachenko could not handle Orlando Salido collapsing the pocket. Just couldn't. Lost that fight. Now we're here years later talking about Salido, excuse me, talking about Lomachenko as one of the best in the sport pound for pound. Just understand, Lomachenko's a smart guy. He has never given Salido a rematch. His record against Salido is 0 and 1. Many of Lomachenko Nation follow my videos. Why hasn't your guy gotten back in the ring with Orlando Salido, who did not have 
Lomachenko's amateur record and who, quite frankly, by his own admission, was just enjoying the sport of boxing, didn't take it seriously until he was fighting Juan Manuel Marquez and then he thought, you know what, this guy, it, in a fight he lost, this guy's not that much better than me. Why am I not taking the sport more seriously? Right, so Salito, of course, has gone on and has gotten belts. The point, though, is a great amateur career didn't necessarily compute, even with a great fighter like Lomachenko, into being bulletproof as a professional. Go down the list. You're going to see some great fighters who won Olympic goals. Right? Lennox Lewis, who as a pro got stopped by Oliver McCall, has been in some other tough fights as a pro. Right? Understand, too, some guys who failed in the Olympics, Floyd Mayweather, Riddick Bowe, turned out to be better pros than they were Olympians. So, Clarissa Shields, like Lomachenko, two gold medals. Great, but folks, these are the big leagues. This isn't the amateurs anymore. What I want people to do, and I've had this fight in my favorites folder now for several days. I want people to revisit Clarissa Shields' fight against Hannah Gabriels. Right now, on this site, you're entitled to your own opinion. I'm not going to tell you how to think. What I'm going to do, though, is to just say, as I look at the Hannah Gabriels film, I see a distinct foot speed gap between Gabriels, who has the better legs, and Clarissa Shields. Gabriels moves much better, much better than Clarissa Shields. Shields starts getting desperate. Shields gets caught. She goes down. Now understand, I know as an amateur, Clarissa Shields was big. Right? Ronda Rousey, Mike Tyson type big. Great. As a pro, she's fought eight times. Eight. I know she won a ring in her fourth fight and stuff. Okay, great. That's all great. She's been successful as a pro. Two knockouts in eight fights. Two. She's already been dropped in her career. Now she's taking on one of the best jabs in the business. A long time professional champion with legs like Hannah Gabriels but with a better jab and much more length. Make no mistake I know this is not how the press reported it. What I want you to do is to look at the fight yourself. It's online. As I said I have the highlights of the Shields Hannah Gabriels fight in my favorites folder. Right? Just drown out the noise and just look at the film and ask yourself whether Shields, who won that fight, I thought it was a real close fight, but Shields, who was, we should say, awarded the victory in that fight, ask yourself whether Shields should be going off at the odds she's going off at, I believe she's like a three to one favorite or something, over Christina Hammer. Folks, the line here is simply ridiculous. Let me also say too, and I mentioned this in the earlier video, Shields has talked about how she's going to try to walk down Christina Hammer. Right? What I want people to do is to look at their feet and ask yourself whether Shields has the foot speed to walk down Christina Hammer. 
Let me also say, too, that people who walk down other people tend to have huge punches. Right? Think Mike Tyson. Right? They get inside Joe Fraser, left hook. They get inside, it doesn't take much for them to hit you with some serious power. Understand the fighter in this fight with the higher KO percentage is Christina Hammer. Right? Understand what it takes to get KOs. The great Emmanuel Stewart was a big time believer that you hit someone with the jab, you soften them up with the jab. Then when they're not expecting it, you throw the right hand. Or if you're a southpaw, the big left hand. Right? The point is, it wasn't that you come in head hunting. Right? No, it's the punch the other guy doesn't see. Or the other woman doesn't see that hurts them. Now, Christina Hammer, I'm just telling you, throws an awfully good right hand after she's battered you with the jab. All you have to do is to look at her knockout percentage. And I know she fought someone who was easy her last fight. But look at the people she fought before that. Let's talk about her worst moment against Anne Sophie Mathis. Now many of you in the comment section to the earlier video have pointed out that Mathis historically is one of the hardest punchers in women's boxing history. Right? I'm not going to call her the hardest because Anne Wolf, Layla Ali had their moments. Right? But let's just say Mathis is clearly on the short list of the hardest punchers in women's boxing history. Understand, Lady Hammer has already fought someone with the huge punch. I believe it's an open question on whether Clarissa Shields, with two knockouts in eight fights, who lands several times on Hannah Gabriels, who ends that fight upright. I think there's an open question on whether Clarissa Shields, as a professional, not as an amateur, but as a professional, has an Ann Wolf type punch. I haven't seen that. It doesn't show up on film. Well, in the Mathis fight, it's interesting. Because you'll notice that Hammer is doing high level stuff. Understand the fight's several years old. In other words, Hammer has had the benefit of continuing her development, and she's still in her 20s. She's still in her prime. She has learned the game that much more since the Mathis fight. Well, understand, in the Mathis fight, you'll notice she's grabbing Mathis's hands. She's tying Mathis up. So I've heard Clarissa Shields say, look, Hammer has holes in her game. She fights with her chin up. She's unsteady on her feet, which I don't buy, but this is what Clarissa Shields says. She can't fight inside. Right? I'll just say this. You know, like Vladimir Klitschko, who I didn't think could fight inside, Hammer has techniques to tie people up inside. You see that from the Mathis fight. In fact, the way the Mathis fight ends is Hammer has her tied up, Mathis has a hand free, and then out of a clinch, hits Hammer several times, where Hammer then hits the canvas. That fight officially is a no contest. The referee the day of the fight disqualified Mathis, gave the win to Hammer. Right? The point is that that's out of a clinch. In other words, against a big hitter. One of the biggest hitters in women's boxing history. Hammer, who had the superior outside game. Better jab, better movement. Back foot. Could hit you backing up. 
right? Hammer is inside, knows how to hold. So I'll say this, at these odds, I think this fight's a no-brainer. You're getting the long-standing professional champion with the higher KO percentage and the better jab. And as I've said, the fight does not start until Clarissa Shields gets by Hammer's jab. Right? Understand, if she doesn't get by the jab, for the first four rounds, I believe Shields is going to be down a minimum of two rounds, right? Let's say 3-1. If she really looks bad, Shields might be down 4 nothing. Then, let's say Shields starts to get inside. She didn't stop Hannah Gabriels. That fight goes to full 10. Let's say she gets inside and lands some shots. Are you sure that a fighter with two professional knockouts in eight fights has the power to turn out the lights on Christina Hammer? I think Hammer, given that she's a better than two to one underdog here, is the obvious play. Quite frankly, let's face it, Hammer with more fights, with a higher KO percentage, who's clearly, in my opinion, the best fighter Clarissa Shields has fought in her eight fight career. Right? Hammer, the long time professional champ, should have been the favorite in this fight. So looking around, look, I love the Olympics too. Right, but looking around, what I'm seeing here is a very personable Clarissa Shields. She's also very good. I'm not saying she's not good. But I'm seeing someone who is clothed in Olympic success. Who won her first gold medal in the Olympics at age 17 or something like that. I'm seeing the people, the public, being a little blinded by the Olympic branding and not looking at the professional reality of the fact that she's facing a fighter with more experience. She's facing a fighter who has the single best punch in this fight and it's a jab. Right? And they're also overlooking the fact. And I know the judges had wide scores in that Clarissa Shields Hannah Gabriels fight. I understand it. But they're overlooking the fact that in the actual fight, forget what the judges did. You look at the fight yourself and you tell us. In the actual fight, Clarissa Shields did not beat Hannah Gabriels by that much. Also, aren't you concerned that Clarissa Shields doesn't have much of a back foot game? Right? I'm just telling you, if you're fighting someone with a great jab, and they get you leaning backwards, which is not unexpected, right? Someone with a great jab and legs who gets you leaning backwards what are you going to do if you don't have a back foot game? What are you going to do if your game consists of collapsing the pocket? Right? Together here online, we followed a lot of fighters. Right? A lot of fighters. I'm just telling you that when a front foot heavy fighter can't collapse the pocket, think Mike Tyson against... Evanda Holifield, both fights, right? Both fights. When a front foot heavy fighter can't get on their front foot, gets stood up, odd things start happening, right? So I don't understand this line. 
I don't understand how the longtime professional champion with the reach, with the jab, with the legs, right, with the higher KO percentage, is the underdog. So yes, I am leaning toward Christina Hammer in this fight. Right? Let me also say too that when fighters try to get reckless and try to just jump in and disregard somebody's great jab and stuff like that, you end up with situations like the Ali Liston rematch, don't you? Where Ali's backing up, Liston jumps in, boom, his head snaps back. I know some people are going to say, hey, that fight was fake and stuff like that. Wow, was Liston that good of an actor to snap his head back like that? <laughs> Come on. Give, give me a break. <laughs> right? All I'm saying is just think of the fights. Think Salvador Sanchez up on the ropes against Wilfredo Gomez, one of the great fights in history. Right? Gomez, heavy puncher has his man right where he wants him with his back up against the ropes jumped in on a great fighter ended up on his back right I'm not sure if Clarissa Shields even gets close to Christina Hammer early in this fight understand this is women's boxing I believe this fight is a 10 round match Right? If Clarissa Shields starts slow, she's going to get desperate. You start just jumping in on a fighter who's an excellent counterpuncher. You start jumping in on a fighter who has an excellent jab, who has reach. Who's led you to focus on the jab the first few rounds and who still has a right hand back here waiting for a countering opportunity. And you're asking for trouble. I recommend everyone take a look at this fight. Right? Style-wise, it's Joe Frazier against Ali. Here's the difference. Right? The difference is Joe Frazier had the firepower and the KO percentage. And the bob and weaving to get inside and to do serious damage in just a few punches. I have the tape of the Joe Fraser Ali fight in my favorites folder here. What I want you to do is to just look at the first round. Understand Joe Fraser smoking Joe, his big punch was his left hook. It finds a home on Ali in the first round. Right? Ali, you don't even have to watch that deep into the film. Ali gets hit with the left hook and Ali shakes his head to the crowd to let the crowd know, look, you know, this champ from the early 70s doesn't have anything that Ali, the unbeaten champion from the 60s, hasn't seen already. Right? That's the first round. Understand, <laughs> later in the fight, that left hook drops Ali. Right? Now, when Clarissa Shields gets inside on Christina Hammer, is it going to be the first round or is it going to be the fourth or fifth round where 40% or 50% of the fight's already ended? When she gets inside, does she have the firepower? Does she have the firepower that Joe Fraser had? Right? Blows up Ali's jaw. Right? Does she have enough firepower to do something on the inside? Also, think about what happened when Alexander Povetkin, for example, Olympic gold medalist, another guy with a big Olympic brand, got inside on a different Olympic gold medalist, Vladimir Klitschko. Right? Klitschko didn't have to know how to fight inside, did he? Because Klitschko clinched on the inside. Right? How do you know? That Christina Hammer isn't going to be able to just clinch on the inside against Clarissa Shields, who only has two KOs. I'm leaning with the underdog here. I think this fight is a unique opportunity. 
Let me also concede. I picked Mikey Garcia against Errol Spence. Right? Some fights have blown up. This is gambling. Play at your own risk. Nothing is certain. Certainly nothing is guaranteed. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by. Let's all enjoy the fight this weekend.